Hi guys, this is Tech Medica here, and I'm going to be showing you how to replace the top screen on a DS Lite. I will also be showing you how to fix tricky A buttons or D-pad buttons. This will be a very in-depth step-by-step guide, um, and so if you are looking for a shorter video, this is probably not the greatest one for it, but if you want something to relax and just watch, or if you're looking for something for a complete beginner, or you need a refresher, this is a good video for you. So I hope you enjoy and just chill with the vibes and the good music and I will show you how to repair this guy. So today we have a black DS light and as you can see I already pre-diagnosed it um, and we are going to take that guy off um, and it says I tested the mic already so I know the mic is all working and everything else seems to be working on it and it looks like I already started prying it open not fully obviously so what we want to do is when we start is we want to make sure with this battery we want to pull out this little tab here i find that it's best to do this with a spudger but you also can use tweezers just make sure you do not puncture this little battery because it can leak uh chemicals and, and try not to puncture with metal especially because that could be really bad and then you will see here that there is a phillips screw here and you will need to switch this is, i have a y screw right now you want to make sure you have a phillips screw um, I believe the one I'm using is a triple zero. I don't know screws very well. I just do this. I don't pay attention to sizes. So you want to unscrew this little guy right here. And it's going to be a little short screw. There's going to be different sizes of screws for all of this console. So please keep track of them. Um, there's not too many. It's, and it's pretty easy to figure out which one's which. But it's always good practice to separate your screws no matter what you're working on. You can do that with tape or like a mat like mine which has little holes to show you where to put them. And then what else you're going to do is you're going to see these little bumpers. These are uh, sticky bumpers. So you want to pry underneath them. You don't want to try to puncture them because we want to reuse them. And then we want to hold on to them. I typically like just sticking them on my mat or whatever I'm working on so that they don't lose their stickiness and I pry them off later. Okay, put those there. All right, these guys are also flip screws, but they're slightly longer and they are a gold color. So as you can see here, we have the gold colored screw. I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, my poor little camera here is struggling to focus, but I promise you it is a gold. Again, you want to make sure you keep track of all your screws because you don't want to lose them. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get our Y screw and we want to go undo this little screw by the game cartridge slot. Um, that screw, oh, we got rubbing alcohol, decided to join the party. Um, but we want to make sure we remember this one because I've had times where I tried to pry this open and I forgot to take that out and I have broken cases. Did I take that one out already? Oh, apparently I took some screws out. But there's also going to be a Y screw here and a Y screw here. I took them out already, apparently. And there's also going to be a Y screw here. I did not take this one out. These ones are a bit longer, too. So make sure not to mix these up. But it doesn't matter where you put these. These are all the same size. So this one's the same size. This one's the same size. This one's the same size. Um, this one's a different size. And it's black. Um, and these are gold Phillips, and then we have a short fill-up here. So, next what we want to do, again, this is easiest with a spudger, but you can use, I have used, uh, tweezers before, and use, like, the back side of the tweezers. Um, I've also just used my hands, but it's easiest with a spudger, because as you can see, it immediately gets in there. And you can get really cheap spudgers, too. And if you get a lot of repair little kits with these DS's, um, typically they'll come with a spudger sometimes, like a little cheap plastic one. Um, but, there we go. Okay. So now we have revealed our motherboard. So what we want to do now is we want to take these little triggers or um, off. And they have little springs, so they will snap back at you. It kind of hurts sometimes. <laughs> But it won't do any damage, I promise. It just spooks you more than anything. Okay, just take those off as a whole. Okay, so we got our motherboard. So we're going to need our Phillips screw head again. 
right now of the Y, so I'm going to take that off. So now we have a little Phillips screw here and a little Phillips screw here. So we want to unscrew those because those are what holding our motherboard in. Okay, so now that we removed those, we have better access on getting this out. Before that, we have a couple of wires we need to remove. So we have this, which is our Wi-Fi card, and you notice there's a little wire hanging off of it. So we want to just pull that wire off. It's pretty easy. It comes off. But again, we don't want to be abusive with these wires. They're still fragile. So we got our Wi-Fi card. Take that off. And now, here is a fun part. Um, it's not that bad, but it can be annoying. So we have to slide this under. As you can see, it goes under this game cartridge here. And there's a lot of stuff under this game cartridge, like uh, the CPU, um, I'm not sure what else, MOSFETs, I think, and stuff like that. I'm not 100% sure. I just fix them. I don't know how they work, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. And then we have our mic cable here. We want to make sure you pull that off. Sometimes I use my fingers, like that just popped off, or I use tweezers or a spudger, whatever is easiest for you. And we just want to get that off, so we want to pull that away. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lift this hole. We're going to push. We're going to push from the bottom screen forward, and then we're going to pop that out. But be careful, don't just throw it out there, because we have a ribbon cable right here. And this ribbon cable is really fragile, so we want to make sure we treat it with kindness. So, what we're going to do next is going to take our spudger, or you can use your fingernail, whatever you want. There's a little black clip right here, and we want to make sure we are gentle with this. We don't want to just rip this off. So, we want to push that off, and it'll just snap off. It didn't come off. There we go. Now it snapped off. Um, and you'll hear it click when it snaps off and when you snap on. And then you want to shim and see, now we shimmy the board out. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this beautiful motherboard. We're going to set it to side because we don't need it right now. Because right now we need to fix this top screen. So what I like to do with all my DS's is that just in case, because sometimes it could be the motherboard's fault why this top screen is not working. What I like to do is I like to make sure that it is not the mother's, it's not the screen's fault. So what I do is I put them in here and you don't have to do this you can just have a raw board and you don't even have to do this step most of the time it is not the motherboard but i do this because i've had it way too many times where it was the motherboard so we want to make sure that's sitting there and then we want to plug in our top screen this is our good top screen by the way this is what we're going to steal from but And now I'll go more in depth on how to put these top screens in, but just for the sake of speediness, um, for now I'm not going to tell you, but later on I'll show you. So we got that top screen in, and I totally forgot we need the Wi-Fi card. So fun fact, uh, DS lights will not turn on unless you have a Wi-Fi card plugged in. I do not know why, I couldn't tell you the mechanics behind that, but... There we go. And then we need a battery, obviously, because this won't turn on. Okay. Got our battery, and I'm gonna see if this so. Okay. It's turning on. Okay, this confirms to me it is not the mother bullard's fault. It is definitely the screen's problem. So, now I know for sure that that motherboard is working perfectly fine, and it's not our screen's problem. I and mean, it's our screen's problem, sorry. Just gonna pop that all out. Again, you do not need to do this step, but I just wanted to briefly show you, just in case you wanted to make sure. But most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, it is the screen's fault. So now we're gonna go back here. And because now we know for certain that the screen is at fault, what I do is I just rip that off. And 
Again, you don't have to do that, but I do that because it keeps me sane, because otherwise I'll keep retesting the same screen over and over again, thinking it works when it doesn't. Um, so I tend to just break the screens if they do not work, just so I know for a fact that it's not working, and that's why I broke it. But again, if you're just working on your own one little concert, console, you do not need to do that. This is because I work on so many of these. I buy um, 30 lots at a time, so I buy 30 of them at a time, so it's just easier for me. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about the screen cable, because I'll show you later how we take care of the screen cable, but right now we don't need to worry about the screen cable because again, this is broken anyway, so we don't need to worry about it. So we're gonna remove this part, put it aside, um, and then we're going to pull that out. This is the hinge piece. Oh, I went flying, it's okay. And as you can see, I either started prying these off previously or uh, somebody else did when I bought the lot. I'm guessing I did, probably because I needed black um, rubbers, but I'll show you on the white screen how to take these off. So you just want to get like a sharp tool. I typically use a dental pick. You can use tweezers, but they're not as clean. Um, you even can use an X-Acto knife, but you risk damaging this hinge piece. So it's just better. I su I highly suggest like dental picks like this. Like I got this at Harbor Freight, I think, like a whole set of them for like five bucks, I think. It was a long time ago. And you notice that there's Phillips screws here. So we want to undo these Phillips screws under these pads. There will also be rubbers on here, but again, I took them off, I guess. Um, and I'll show you on the white screen that we're stealing the screen from how you take those off, which is really easy. It's not hard. Um, okay, we're just going to take off each one of these screws. And these screws, fun fact, are the same size as the motherboard screws and are also the same um, size as that one back Phillips screw in the battery um, so you can kind of mix some of the screws up but just try not to this makes it easier especially when you don't know the difference in the beginning it, just, it makes it you more sane if you know which one goes where and what so now what we want to do is we want to push back like pull this back you see that it made a click sound it's easiest with a spudger to do this with but you can use your hands perfectly fine to do that and then you're gonna pull this off and voila screens revealed um so now we're gonna put this part over here um and you'll notice that there's tape so this is really simple and easy we just pull this tape off if it wants if i can grab it i can't seem to grab it let me turn it around maybe it'd be easier that way There we go. I cannot grab this tape. There we go. Okay. So now we got that tape off. So what we're gonna do is, because we want to keep this piece, like this plastic piece, we need to be extra careful when pushing this off. So we want to push from this corner and this corner of the screen up and it's going to feel very wrong and sound very scary um but i promise you it's just trust the process but you also need to be careful not to crack this if you do crack it it's fine you can just glue it it's not going to cause any issues with your ds besides make it look less pretty um but then if you just work it out, it'll eventually just pop out. This part is also going to feel really wrong and it's going to, you're just gonna pull up and just, it's gonna make a snap and it's gonna fling back. And again, it's gonna feel, there it goes. It's gonna feel very wrong, but I promise you, you're not breaking it. Okay, and then I can pull that out. Um, and we're gonna need this black piece right here, but um, we're gonna set this aside. Um, 
And then you have these. And these are really easy, you just pull them out. Um, and then this one, you sometimes you need tweezers to get it out, but I'm kind of getting it. Okay. This is the mic. And there we go. We have a um, empty top um, hinge piece. I just call this a hinge piece, even though it's technically not hinge, but I just always call it a hinge piece. Um, but it's a top frame. So what we want to do next is we're going to need our white screen. Where did it go? There it is. So we're going to need our white screen over here. And this is the exact same thing, but we're just trying to save the screen. Um, the reason why we're not fixing this one is because this one has a cracked hinge, as you can see right here. And so I don't need this. Although typically when you buy screens from the internet, um, you'll get you'll get a screen, but your microphone will not be soldered on. It is, or I mean not your microphone, your speakers will not be soldered on. Um, so it is highly recommended. You can, you don't need anything fancy to solder these on. It's super easy. Um, you just put some flux on, and then you, and you de and then you melt them off, and they just pop right off. Um, you can get a lot of soldering stations really cheap um, for like ten bucks, and they will do everything you need to put these on. Um, I can even show you if you guys want to in a later video, but right now I'm not going to be doing that. Um, but otherwise, there are some people who do pre-solder these on if you just do not want to be involved with solder. But I promise you this is like easy peasy beginner level stuff with soldering if you did this. Okay. So now we're going to just repeat the process, but this time we're going to be way more careful with that little ribbon right there. So we're going to take these out. And I don't think I mentioned before that these screws are very long in these hinge piece and they're different so please 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 do not mix those up because you could totally destroy your ds if you put those in the wrong place um or at least destroy the shell um okay so now that we're trying to preserve this ribbon cable we want to pull this aside and then we're going to push this in the slot right here and we're going to Kind of shimmy that in there, push it down, and there we go. All right, and then next we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that off, and this stayed in there, which is fine. So we're gonna just get some tweezers. There we go. And we got the hinge piece out. So now what we're going to do, I can actually show you how to take these rubbers off now that they're on this one. So these are the bumpers. So what we're going to do is you're just going to take your dental pick. Or I guess you can use tweezers. I've never tried it with tweezers before. And then you're going to just pull up and boom. Um, sometimes they're more stubborn and don't want to come out. So you kind of just have to like work it out. Um, but typically they're pretty easy. Um, I haven't for very many not be easy, but um, we just want to make sure you pull those out because it will not, this top part will not come off otherwise. So then we want to do the same thing with those. Oh dear, ow, that hurt. Uh, the ribbon kind of stabbed me. Didn't even know they could do that. Okay. There we go. And remember, with these parts, you kind of want to stab the corner and lift it up. Um, it's the best way I've been able to figure out how to do it without making them look weird. So. Again, a dental pick is entirely optional, but I highly suggest it because I think it will not make it look as good with tweezers but you can if you are a pro at tweezers and do what you're good at these Phillips screws out simple and easy Okay, 
there we go. Again, we're going to repeat this process again. We're going to push. Already popped out. Again, we're going to use our spudger. Okay. Alrighty. So now we have the same situation as we did before. This is pretty easy and it's good knowledge to learn even if you don't have to do this like take a screen out and put it in another one and we got another ad lovely but it's just good practice to to know how to do this especially if you ever want to fix more of these skip that okay i don't know why they put the tape there that wasn't very effective let me I mean, I know they didn't, it was a machine, but... Oh my goodness, this tape. There we go. I was a little stubborn. Okay, so you have two options. Because this hinge is already cracked, you can get a pair of pliers, like this. Or cutting pliers kind of thing. And you can just rip it off very very carefully without touching this but I don't recommend that because um, you if you don't have steady hands you could damage that um, cable but so we're gonna first first before we get into that we're gonna push from the corners like we did before it doesn't matter as much on this one if we break it like I'm breaking it um, because again it's broken anyway this plastic part um, then we're gonna pull this aside. I'm gonna be very careful because this ribbon is very fragile. It can take some beating, but nothing crazy. So don't be like ripping it, tearing it, pulling it, um, bending it. They don't like anything like that. So just be gentle with them, be kind with them. So we're gonna take those guys out. So, what we're gonna do this back so now it's gonna be much easier to take out so now we have to do is with this ribbon cable you have to coil it within itself like this is really hard to see because I have to use my fingers okay but trust me I'm coiling it so yeah can you kind of see how I'm coiling it then you want to push it back this this is very it feels very wrong to do this but I promise you you're not damaging it as long as you're not being aggressive and being gentle you're not damaging it okay and then you want to push it again it feels very wrong but you, you just have to it kind of helps if you kind of push pull this a little bit as you push in it and boop pops out. I made that look way easier than it actually is the first time. The first time you do this, it's grueling and it takes forever because you are so paranoid you're gonna damage it. But I promise you, it is not that bad. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take this part out because I want it. Not, you don't need to do that, but I, but I want it. So, and then we're gonna throw that away because that's broken. Okay, now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna take this frame. Um, and we're gonna make sure we're using the same hinge piece for the frame that it came with because these hinge pieces come in two different sizes. So it's good that we keep the same hinge with the same DS. That's in case you have multiple. But um, in the case of you don't, then don't worry about it. Easiest way to do this is again, you have to coil it. You gotta coil it. I know it feels very wrong, but you just have to be gentle. And then you have to slide it in. And sometimes it might take a few times, and sometimes you might be too worried about it. And my motto is, if it doesn't feel right, do it again. But you have to do a little bit out of your comfort zone with this. It's going to feel a little wrong, no matter how you do it. So, okay, there we go, got it in. Again, I made that look easy because this is probably like, I think this is like my 200th DS I fixed. So, um, I've been doing this for a while. So, I, I make it look easy. Okay. 
So we kind of want to lay it out like that because that just makes it easier to set everything up. Okay, we're gonna get our mic. These mics tend to be dirty, um, so I just kind of like rub them off usually, or brush them off, or get a toothbrush, brush them off. Okay, we're gonna put this guy in there, just like that. This uh, microphone loves to do what it wants. Um, it's kind of had to smush it down, um, force it into this little space that barely fits it. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is you'll see these little divots or little posts or I don't know what to call them. These things that seem to they'll hold the cord in place. There we go. Kind of push them in there. You can kind of see it on camera, little black little things. You also want to make sure this cable is within this little gap. There's a little gap there for the cable. It's in right or else your screen will not fit correctly and you have to just remove it all and then do it again. So now we have our Wi-Fi card or the second part of our Wi-Fi card. Pull this through. This one's a little way easier to put in. I'm gonna just put on those posts. Then we're gonna tidy it up by tucking it. Tucking it behind these little posts. There's two of them. As you can see there. There's, there's one here. And there's one here, so I know it's hard to see. Um, I'm kind of on a budget, so I apologize if the camera quality is not very good. I'm a broke college student, and this is what happens. I apologize for any of the quality issues. Okay, so we're gonna pull that up. So we're gonna pull this long guy. We're gonna pull it behind, and it's kind of weird. So you're going to pull it in between the ribbon cable and the screen in this little gap. Or else it won't fit. And you know what I realized? We have the wrong color screen. I almost skipped a step. Got a little distracted. Okay. So we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to forget that part. One second. Um, so I kind of went ahead of myself, but that's fine. We're going to make do. So, what? because it's not the right color, we want to... Pull at the corner of this plastic, and then we want to pry this off. You don't want to like fully like be super hard with core with it, but it's okay for a little bit. Oh, flip right back. Pull that off. We don't need that. So you can throw that away or do whatever you want with it. Okay, and that's the LCD. Now we're gonna take this black one, do the exact same thing. Now we're gonna use the frame. Do not touch anything or else you'll regret it and hate yourself. So do not touch it. Don't touch the LCD, don't touch the touch, or not the touch screen, the glass. Do not touch anything. Um, just touch the edges. Cause if you get anything, oh, like that. Let me get that off. There you go. Anything on there, you will be cleaning it for hours. And it will never be as clean as it was. Never. Unless you're like some miracle worker. But I don't. I've accidentally touched screens. And I just give up. Because I'm just like well. It is what it is. So. Okay. There we go. So we're using the frame to our advantage. We're using the frame to like set up the screen. Um, and as you notice. We're just going to press down. To make sure they are sealed correctly there's no gaps or anything and you can even look up here and see that it's perfectly sealed okay now we're gonna push it out again because now we are going to take this long guy 
bring that over there. Put that in between the screen and the ribbon wire. Like that. And then we're going to put this guy in first. Doesn't matter which one you do first, but. And there's also a little post for its wires. We're going to tuck it behind. Nice. And then we're going to take this one, we're going to put that there, and then we're going to make sure these wires are kind of in between. Personally, you can use tape to hold these wires down like before. It doesn't matter what tape you use. You can just use regular old plain tape, or you can use, uh, if you use packaging tape, um, you can use whatever you want. Although, personally, I just learned that I don't want to bother unless it's really bugging me. There's also a post here that we need to make sure that those wires are behind. And then we kind of, what I do is I just keep tucking these in until they're like at least semi in place. And then I get our top part. And you, it won't line up. It's kind of off. As you can see here. Be kind of off. And then you kind of push down. If it doesn't fit, do not force it. Something's wrong. If it doesn't fit, do not force it. And I repeat myself, do not force it. I have broken screens by being greedy. So don't... Be greedy. This slow and steady wins the race, especially on console repair. So we do not want to force or rush ourselves. We want to make sure we get everything right to the best of our abilities. Okay, so once you have it in a good spot, you want to push it back. And this guy is not wanting to push back. So again, I'm not going to force it. It means something's wrong. So, I'm going to look again and see if something's off. That was kind of off. So, oh, those seem fine. And then I'm going to put it again. See if it goes. There we go. Went through. Okay. So, again, you're going to just put it on and then push it on. Um, so, now that that's... Oh. Tweezer uh, is kidnapping a wire. Stop. Oh. Hopefully that didn't affect anything. Shouldn't have. Okay. Another ad. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that, um, you have two choices here. You can save the screws at the end or do them now. Personally, I do them now because um, I don't like stressing out the hinges like that. And it stresses out the hinge screwing the screws back. So personally, I just put them back. Um, and remember, we're using short little Phillips. So we're not using long ones or anything crazy like that. So we're using short little Phillips. Okay. And, uh, had some screws stuck to my screwdriver. Okay. Okay, there we go. And again, you can put the bumpers on now, or you can wait later. Um, for the sake of uh, satisfaction, we're gonna put them on now. And that disappears. Oh wait, we were missing some bumpers, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Okay, so I only had one little thing to put on there. So, I'll have to grab for my stash of bumpers and stuff and fix this up. And I'll show you that after, probably. But, for now, we're gonna leave it like that. I know it's not glorious, but it is everything we have. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this aside. Because we also had a problem with our buttons. So, what we're gonna do is... Usually these are dirty, which is not surprising, because these are very old. And as you can see, they're a little bit dirty. Um, nothing too crazy, but a little 
little dirty. And what I do... Okay, what do I do with that? I just take a toothbrush. And you will need isopropic alcohol if you are going to do this. If you are cleaning um, anything on a console, you will need isopropic alcohol. You cannot do it with any other thing. I mean, you can do it with some other chemicals. I've never tried them before, but regardless, you will always need isopropic alcohol. Um, and you will need 90% or higher. You cannot do a little bit. It can't be 60% because that's too much water. This is one of the few things that is electronic safe. So we want to make sure we scrub those. Those are probably not what's causing our issue, but they're definitely not helping. So what we want to do is we also want to clean this guy too because this is our membrane. And then before I do that, I want to see if there's any... Oh, yeah, we have a problem. So see that that's a problem so we can't this needs to be thrown away <laughs> so what we're gonna do let me see if another one over here I might I might not it's the same one I grabbed no okay okay here's a different one so again we want to clean it off I just use isopropyl alcohol not like a ton or anything just a little bit clean it off and then now, here it's really important, and I'm going to do this on this one too, but, um, so I learned this recently, but a lot of membrane issues, if it's a membrane issue, I will check the membrane board as well, it's because of these little black spots here. Little black things get really dirty and can, can cause some issues. You're also going to do this with the cotton bud, which with this part would be a little bit easier. Um, and you just want to make sure that nothing in the world is going to stop this thing from working. Okay, then you want to put that back. These are probably going to fall out later, but that's fine. Okay, that is gross. I don't know if you can even see it, but okay. Gonna clean that off. That looks good. And even though this one was not causing us issues, we're gonna still make sure that it's clean because there's no reason not to. And it'll make it work better anyway. Okay. Okay, now we have that one clean. This one you don't really have to worry about. I've never had issues with this little guy. Um, and this is less dependent on membranes, but still a functional part of it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, because we also have that button issue, is we're gonna make sure that our keyboard, I mean keyboard, <laughs> wrong device, dear Medica. Uh, so what we're gonna make sure is, um, these are little button sensors. We're gonna make sure these are clean, and from what I can see, these are very clean. I don't even feel the need to clean them because of how clean they are. So, uh, normally if these are bad, they'll have uh, black spots on them, or dirt, or something, and then you just clean it off with isopropyl alcohol. It might take a few tries, but it'll come off. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab our top screen again, or top part. And we need to grab this part we need both of these and your buttons might fall out but it's okay you can just put them back oh, there we go and we have a little dirty spot right there so I'm gonna just go with my brush clean that off okay the best part about this is to just slide these in here okay and our all of our buttons fell out but that's okay and 
And then you want to take your ribbon cable and you want to gently slide it through this little slot. It's sometimes a pain. As you can see, even though I've done this forever, I'm struggling with it. Come on, guy. Sometimes changing the angle helps. And that seemed to help me. Or not. You want to slide this through as soon as that ad is over. Okay, we want to put that through and slide it in like that. Okay, you want to hold that other side, and then you need to have your hinge piece. And this will only go in one way. And sometimes you kind of have to push it in there hard. Get it in. That one was easy, so I didn't have to do that. Um, then you want to take this little guy. You want to push this on top. And then you want to make sure that everything snaps correctly. Okay. So what you need to do now is you need to get your long screws. These really long ones that I told you not to mix up. Doesn't matter which one you put in first, but we need to make sure that they're really tight um, because this is what is holding literally our two halves together. It's these two little screws. They're not really little, but besides the point. So before we continue on with that, we're going to just make sure this opens and closes like normal. It does. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put our buttons back that decided to fly all over the place. And make sure everything is fine and dandy with them. behind both of these posts like that and then it'll curl around this second one and there's a little post to tuck it into it's kind of really hard to see because again it's tiny but it's right there a little post right there and then you want to put this right there tuck that in tuck that in this one we don't need to tuck in and then tuck it into this last one Make sure it's firmly in. This just saves you sanity. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Okay, we want to make sure this black one is kind of out of the way. And then we're going to put it, like, right over there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this, this connector is unlocked. So we want to make sure this black part is flipped up. Okay? Or else it's not going to work and you're never going to get it in. Then you're gonna push this ribbon towards the connector and it's really challenging to do this the first time. I remember doing it the first time and I could not get it in for the life of me. It took me like an hour <laughs> and then I got it in. You want to make sure these little notches are perfectly against the connector. And I'll show you kind of what I mean. So let's just take this screen for example. So you see these little tabs on each side? You want to make sure those tabs are perfectly against 
this connector. Um, because otherwise it will not make a good connection, and then you'll be wondering why it doesn't work. So yeah, like, you, their tabs are perfectly against that connector, so we want to make sure those are perfect. And if they don't, if you just, it's always good, don't just be mad or be upset, because for all you know, you, you could have put it in wrong, and it just is not getting a good connection, so... If you put this all together and you're like, dang, why is it not working? Um, you can just go back and look and see if you connected it correctly. So the next part is you want to put this white little one in. There we go. We're going to take the Wi-Fi card off again. And then we're going to screw the motherboard down. And with the short little Phillips, make sure they're the short ones. If they're not, it could possibly damage your plastic shell. Like the whole thing that's covering this guy. Oh, I just threw a screw. It's fine. I have plenty more. And then we're going to put this guy in this one. that oh i love this song this is one of my favorite Pokemon songs so now this is a really annoying thing to do it's probably one of the most annoying things to do and i still struggle with it i'm a lot better than i used to be so we need to put this black cable under here and get it to the other side and there's the cpu all sorts of stuff down there and it loves to get caught on my best advice is to try to put it um between this little um, black doohickey and the charger. So between this one and the charger. So, and, because there's a gap right there. Oh, easy. That came out easy. Normally it's not that easy. Sometimes it takes a minute. Uh, again, I've had it get stuck in there and I've had to do like surgery to get it out. So just try to be careful. Okay, with the black cable, you want to make sure it's tucked nicely behind the charger and on behind this, like, twin post. I don't know what to call it. Um, and then we need to put our Wi-Fi card back. And then we're going to just plug it right in, like that. And we're going to make sure, like, all the excess is on this side and not the other side because it could cause annoyances later on so we're almost done we're almost there guys so what we need to do next we're going to take our back shell this is very very important i can't stress this enough the amount of times i broke it like i've gotten this far and broken the motherboard from not doing this correctly i i couldn't i would be rich okay so what we need to do is you notice that there is the power switch the power switch um with the little knob and then you notice that there's also the volume switch with a little knob. <laughs> so on your spec shell, you have the volume and the power switch, and they, uh, sorry, power switch, and they both slide around and move. So we need to make sure our power switch is all the way pushed down. And I can't stress enough, it needs to be all the way pushed down. If it's not, it will not, it could break your motherboard. So do not make sure it is all the way pushed down. And then we need to make sure our volume slider is at the same size, like same like volume as our chassis, okay? As our shell. So right now it's on negative, like fully no volume. So we're gonna move our shell on negative volume. Okay, and double check, triple check the power slider is all the way down, okay? It's not worth it, exact. I'm skipping steps though. I stressed that, but I forgot to put the sugars in. Silly um, Medica forgot some steps. That's fine. I'm being eager. But either way, you got the point. So, the next part, which I forgot, is we need to put our triggers in, or else we're um, missing some buttons. So, the triggers are really easy and simple. So, we need to have our spring. And then we're going to put it in between this hole. that we're gonna hold it in place and you need this metal rod oh not that this metal rod and we're gonna slide it 
in. We're going to put it into this peg right here. It's like a little peg hole. And then we're going to bring this extra middle bit and we're going to tuck it in between that like twin tower thing. Twin tower is not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, spring flip flu. So we need to put this on again. And there's our metal rod. And we're going to slide that through. Again, put it in the peg. And tuck that metal part. Because it's spring, we want the spring to be taut. So then we're going to do that. And again, I know I said this like a bajillion times, but we want to make sure these are lined up. Now we're going to push down. And sometimes it likes to do this. That's fine. You just push down. But again, um, don't do anything if it feels wrong. Especially with this back part. If it feels incredibly wrong, just take it apart and try again. Because it's not worth it. It's just not. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to first just put enough screws so we can test it and make sure it's all working correctly. We want a short Phillips. We're going to put it in there. We're going to get our gold Phillips. And put them in both of these. Okay, now what we're going to do gonna put our battery back and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this around and I'm gonna turn off the lights so that you guys can see the screens better all right so we're turning this on okay so the top screen is working so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that it's working from all angles because sometimes we damage the ribbon and it's not gonna work so it seems to be working just fine. We're gonna make sure that our D-pad is working. It's working beautifully. Make sure our A button's working, which was the problem before. It is working fabulously. And X is working, everything's working. Everything is working so far. We're just gonna go through this, power through this. It doesn't matter. It's also in Japanese, don't worry about it. These things are region free, so I can easily change it to English. So we're gonna go in PictoChat, because PictoChat's really easy to test all these things on. And it's important that we go on PictoChat for many reasons, um, because we wanna make sure our triggers are go working correctly. So we just did a weird drawing, okay. Uh-oh. What's going on? Which trigger is not working? The L trigger is not working. So unfortunately, my L trigger is not working. Um, and that could be many reasons. It could be that I put it in incorrectly or just got it, it got weird while I put it in. Um, it also could mean that, um, sorry for light. It also could mean that simply uh, our L trigger was bad and I failed to test that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off. But because this video is getting really long um, and typically you will not have an L trigger issue. But these are very old consoles so it's quite possible. If your trigger is not working it is entirely plausible to fix it. But it's also okay if you don't because triggers are not vital in most games. Um, I mean they're vital in some but not in every game. Say the most vital games there probably are for is like Mario Kart and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's okay if it's not working. Um, it also could just mean that this, this trigger is faulty and we need to resolder it and get a new one on. And I would love to do the video for you later from that, you guys. But for now, we do not have enough time. So unfortunately... This was a little bit of a bust, but not quite because we did get it working as you saw and that we did re successfully replace that top screen. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to just mess with this trigger and we'll see if we need to make it a later video. If you guys really enjoyed this content, please let me know and stay tuned for one of our future videos where I'm going to be working on my old iPhone. 
well, iPhone 6 with a cracked screen. I've never worked on one of these before, but I'm definitely going looking forward to working on it and showing you guys what I do with it. So please stay tuned for that if you want to see that. Um, I also will be working on many more TS lights and stuff like that. So please subscribe, comment, like the video, or tell me you hate it. I don't care. Anyways, peace.